Hi folks and thanks for joining me. You're looking at my little uh, Tom Thumb bike radio from 1949. It was actually made by Automatic. It's a model B44. I'll put the uh, restoration series here at the uh, top right corner. You can click on that if you didn't get an opportunity to check out the uh, restoration uh, journey to get this one in better shape. Lots of uh, do-overs, but uh, anyway, like uh, this portable and many others, I've got another portable in my collection I want to introduce, and I thought it would be a great time to uh, shift back to a, a portable radio that uh, probably just a little cleaning on the uh, case itself would uh, get things in shape and order, and uh, in addition to the electrical restoration. So uh, let me introduce the uh, next project, which uh, will leverage a uh, 67 and a half volt B battery. You can see this is a reproduction here that I've pulled out of the uh, little Tom Thumb. And the uh, A battery, which is nothing more than a, a D battery here. And you can see I've got the old labels on that. Now one of the uh, two batteries here had uh, gone bad in my uh, Tom Thumb. So um, in replacing those, I said, heck, let me just grab another one of my uh, portable radios I've never uh, looked at and uh, see if we can get it uh, playing as well. Then we'll look at uh, maybe prepping another uh, case for uh, some 9-volt batteries to live inside here to get us uh, just under our 67.5 volts here for the uh, B supply and uh, reproduce some labels here as well for some modern day uh, batteries for the uh, uh, type A battery or D battery in the day's world. So here's what I remember or recall on this radio. I was trying to find some of my original documentation and having uh, relocated uh, a few different times since then, but uh, back in the early 90s my wife and I were traveling uh, through Tennessee and I think I uh, discovered this radio at um, one of the many antique shops that were uh, located along the interstate uh, back in the day. And uh, you can see it's a real unique uh, airline radio, which was produced by uh, Montgomery Ward. So uh, here's a look at it on the uh, front, and it's uh, fairly clean. You can see I do have uh, one hairline crack. And I don't know if that's something I've done since it was uh, relocated a few different times here. Or if it's uh, the way I purchased the uh, unit. I can't find any of my old, uh, you know, photos that I took of this uh, early on. But uh, the design is really uh, cool and slick. Again, Montgomery Ward, I think, uh, created this particular radio and sold it back uh, around 1948-49, I believe. It's in uh, Riders, volume 18, page uh, 47 and 48, and I think it also appears in the uh, Sam's photo fact for that period of time. It's a, a super heterodyne set, and uh, the tuning, like a lot of the sets uh, from that period of time, uh, starts out at uh, 540 kilocycles and tops out at around 1650, which was common. And again, I had already mentioned this being a portable uh, battery powered off of the uh, Type A battery, which is equivalent to the Type D today at one and a half volts, and then the uh, Type B battery, which was uh, 67 and a half volts. The uh, current consumption, too, just looking at the uh, riders, was uh, fairly common. So the uh, filaments th uh, for the tubes themselves are in parallel. So uh, 250 milliamps of current for the uh, modern day uh, Type D battery and uh, just under 10 milliamps for the uh, B plus voltages for the uh, Type B battery. It's uh, actually spec'd out at uh, 9 milliamps. I think the little Tom Thumb that I just showed over here out of view, I think it's around uh, 7.5 milliamps or so. We'll open this up and take a look at it here in just a minute. The uh, loudspeaker is a uh, two and a half inch 
uh, PM speaker and it calls out the impedance at 3.2 ohms and it only has an output power of uh, 70 milliwatts so it's uh, not going to produce a, a whole lot of sound for a two and a half inch PM speaker rated at uh, 70 milliwatts but uh, definitely useful. Now I think one thing that's really cool about the design you'll see these leads coming through here that's for a LITS loop antenna that's wound underneath this uh, cover so hopefully it's good and I don't have to try to figure out how to get these uh, tacks out to get access to that without uh, creating some damage but uh, just looking at how good a shape this unit's in um, I would guess it to be in good shape and we can use my uh, external antenna that I built and just use an inductive uh, ferrite here if we need to to do some testing later on assuming we get this thing uh, playing the other thing I think it makes the uh, design somewhat unique here you'll see this uh, mechanical switch but you can see as I'm uh, mashing this here there's a mechanical slide switch uh, right here on the side that uh, turns the unit uh, on and off when the uh, case is uh, closed versus open and uh, there's I think other folks that have uh, restored these it's real common to have uh, problems in this area it closes up right here just for a moment and relax this you can see the uh, case itself a few uh, scuffs here but uh, not bad I'll try to use some uh, plastic polish on that remove some of those scuffs and then some dirt down in here and some of the uh, grooves or what appears to be hopefully some of that will clean up it's got the original uh, carrying handle which is very uncommon this is uh, plastic so you typically find these missing or broken and uh, completely dry rotted so I'm really uh, surprised this one has survived the uh, time and uh, here's the uh, back side itself and to uh, jump into the back side and I have already looked at it so thank goodness no batteries were left in this thing you can see the uh, release here to get access to the uh, back side and uh, here's a look at the uh, inside this thing is just super clean you can see and at first glance uh, I believe it to have all original Ward's Airline uh, tubes so this thing may have never been worked on and uh, someone used it and uh, just put it aside and I think I, again I picked this thing up in uh, Tennessee on uh, one of the road trips uh, through the area back in the early 90s or so condenser tuned you can see here and there's the output uh, transformer itself B battery placement here for the uh, 67 and a half volts in the uh, modern day uh, D cell or what have been the type A battery for that period resides here and I think the uh, polarity calls for the uh, plus side here negative side here here's a look at that uh, mechanical switch that we talked about here that uh, slides in and out to uh, turn the radio on and off and uh, I'll get it out of the uh, little uh, cabinet here that it's uh, mounted in and uh, we'll take a look at what it's going to take to uh, make some repairs here before I do that let me grab the uh, information here I notice this is loose here and we'll glue it back in the back side but here's the original uh, documentation for the set as well and you can see some of the things that I've already uh, noted about it being a super heterodyne in the uh, tuning range and uh, this does show the battery polarity as well um, pretty neat too it talks about the uh, B battery has an approximately 10 times the life of the uh, A battery or the flashlight batteries so it was interesting just giving some tips on that so your filament at 250 milliamps I think is called out versus just under 10 milliamps 
So it's uh, really neat to have this thing so well preserved and like I said no uh, cracks or anything at this point in the uh, case here which is very fragile. We'll go back to the uh, radio just for a minute before I pull this out and uh, we'll look at them in uh, no certain order here but uh, let me grab this one and we'll reference it. So if I'm looking at this correctly the uh, 3SR tube is going to be right here. This is going to be the uh, power amp tube for your uh, uh, power output. And then the uh, 1R5 tube is going to reside here. That's the uh, converter tube. That will be your oscillator circuit right on your RF input. And then the uh, 1T4 tube here is the uh, IF amplifier. And that kind of makes sense. You can see it sitting right inside the tube. IF cans if that's showing up on camera here. And then the uh, final tube here for the uh, four tube complement set is the one uh, S5 tube. That's the uh, detector tube, AVC, and audio. And there's the uh, loop antenna I was talking about where it connects. You can uh, see the uh, two wires there going back to the Litz wire loop connecting here and then right back to the uh, can itself here for ground. Just being gentle as possible here to remove the uh, tuning selector knob. Many times you'll find these uh, broke or cracked and there may be just one hairline crack that's starting to appear right here so we'll uh, use some additional caution there. And I'm thinking to uh, get the uh, chassis out, I'm going to have to take this uh, plastic cover off. So uh, let me go ahead and do that. There's our first look here underneath the uh, plastic cover there. You can see the uh, volume control, the uh, tuning condenser here, and again I had mentioned the two and a half inch. PM speaker. Just looking at this, it looks like I've got uh, just the uh, fasteners here. And this piece of cardboard just seems just to lay there. And uh, very unusual to have something in such great shape. So you can see, I think this radio was definitely uh, stored in someone's home. Not in a uh, barn shed or damp basement. Mystery saw, just these two fasteners here for the uh, switch, it appears. and the uh, small cardboard cover that uh, resides behind the switch itself. And you guys can see how clean this is and that's kind of what I expected. I mean at a glance it looks like it's got all the original uh, resistors and capacitors in it. And I'll probably have to uh, order some caps. I don't think I have many of the uh, 160 volt caps or 200 volt caps left. Everything I have is uh, 630 or greater, so I'm not sure I'll be able to uh, stuff those back underneath there. We'll see if I can use what I have. But we'll go ahead and do some preliminary tests just to make certain the uh, tubes themselves are good. We'll check the uh, loudspeaker. The uh, output transformer here. Make sure it's in good shape. In addition here, we'll uh, check the uh, power switch. You can see it better here. And a lot of corrosion here that's showing up on camera. and uh, maybe some arcing that's occurred there as well over time. But it's uh, hopefully a good cleaning here.
we can uh, make this thing function again if it's uh, not functioning as is. And I'll go ahead and grab a, a piece of cardboard and uh, cover up the uh, speaker here before I jam my finger through it. And it looks like it does have the original airline tubes, uh, best I can tell. So pretty cool looking little uh, portable set here. Let me uh, grab the schematic. I just want to make note of one more thing here for the uh, resistors and uh, the capacitors. I looked at it correctly, 10 total capacitors and only 8 resistors. So folks, I appreciate you guys uh, watching the uh, introduction here to the uh, little airline radio, model 84GCB-1062, A is an alpha, from uh, the late 1940s. Should be a uh, fun and hopefully simple project, but uh, you never know. Time will tell. More to come soon, folks. You guys take care.